this many, many times, and I'll say it until I'm blue in my face, which is not going to happen. <laughs> uh, God, God, God willing. But Judaism has always been an influencing faith, a faith that basically brings others to the knowledge of the one God and has never been prohibited in proselytizing or encouraging other people to join the faith. And unfortunately, every time a rabbi speaks, he becomes an instrument, even unbeknownst to himself, that he is, in fact, proselytizing by the teachings of the Torah, which is, is, is desirable. So the next time you hear a rabbi, it doesn't matter what scale of rabbi he may be, and they say to you, oh, Judaism is not a proselytizing religion. And please explain to me how you can be able to teach others about Judaism and still bring it under the Noahide concept, which is within the concept of Judaism in the first place. How can you really say that, that Judaism is not a proselytizing religion when we have our history that indicate that it was? The only reason we dropped doing it let me say this very clearly. The only reason why we dropped trying to influence others to come and join our faith was because of the programs, was because of the perse persecution, was because every time we opened our mouth, we got basically run for it. We got persecuted for it. And then even worst case scenario, when, when as a result, our bad behavior, bad conduct being demonstrated in public forums, we began per being persecuted for being who we are, Jews. And unfortunately, we get persecuted for the bad things, not for the good things. Because for the good things, God draws people to himself for this cause so they be able to convert or become part of the people, become part of the, the way of thinking, as it were. Be it through the seven universal laws or be it through the laws of Moses, it's still within the law of Moses, the seven mitzvahs b'nei Noah children of Noah, which is all humanity. And as I've said before, in, in quoting even um, this one rabbi, Jacob Emden, 17th century uh, Talmudist, who basically even said it would be better to continue, if you're a Christian, to continue as a Christian. So listen very closely, my Jewish friends. It's, you, you have to be very careful to knocking down Christianity because as we've seen, because of a lot of us who have been involved in showing the Torah as the truth, many have converted to Judaism, dropping Christianity altogether. And if a person drops the idea of, of a, a man being God and the Trinity and all that aspect, and just embraces God, although he's doing a good, not necessarily does he have to leave the Christian fold. And by that I mean he doesn't have to leave these religious institutions out there that basically have embrace the idea of one God except through a mediator, a shituf as it were, between them and God. So don't necessarily knock them down. All because they want to be able to embrace uh, and try to push people towards uh, the the new movement, the new religion of Noahidism. It's different than just being a Noahide, being a follower of Moses. Being a follower of no Moses and not being Jewish and you're keeping with the seven, it's great. But that's not what's going on in this world today. What's going on today is this whole idea that they're trying to create another religion under the, the, under the, the notion of an ancient concept of keeping the seven universal laws. And that is a problem because the Gentile world, the non-Jewish world, are prohibited in creating a religion. That's what took place with, with Christianity. That as a result, there are so many non-Jewish people wanting to become Jewish and you can read that in the Christian Bible how, how they were running to become Jews. They were even circumcising themselves and saying, you know, we're circumcising to be part of the, the covenant of, of Moses that you had an upheaval. First century, by the way. Those of you who don't know what was going on in the first century, it's exactly what was going on. Proselytizing Jews were basically converting the entire world of that time to Judaism until Christianity arose which was a semi-Noahide concept meshed with Judaism, and you have voila, Christianity. And interesting enough, they kept this whole idea of a man being God, um, which we see it's part, according to the Talmud in Sanhedrin, 
is part of what was called the the menut uh, the, the 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 heresy of the um, the notrim. The heresy of the notrim was just that itself. That's why the sages and the rabbis of that time rejected first century Christianity because they put so much emphasis of the, the person being a you might say a Godhead figure and that's the reason it was rejected to this day when you ask your typical Jew is Christianity idolatry and they'll say yes although other poskims Tosafot and others say not necessarily not for the Gentile world and you even have arguments for that so what's my recommendation if you're in Christianity and you love Judaism you embrace a lot of the Jewish concept stay there there's not a structure among the the, the Noahide followers or believers in the Mosaic law you don't we don't have quote unquote Noahide churches no such thing because it's not the idea of creating a religion in which you have a structure ready that's why Judaism exists because Judaism is that structure you want to learn anything about the, the laws of Moses come to the synagogue now of course in today's nomenclature you ask people to come to a synagogue you may be kicked out I'm being honest with you you go to the one over here in Aventura um, which is a Syrian shul which does not accept uh, converts will not recognize any converts no matter how ultra orthodox they are they won't even call them to the Torah you don't go to the shuls like that just basically boycott those shuls just like we have a, a, a wake culture you know you don't have to you don't have to go to a place that they don't want you and believe it or not that grieves the very you know if we understand the idea of grieving the soul of God that grieves the very soul and heart of God when he sees that his children are kicking out other children of God don't do that I never forget and I know I'm going a little bit lengthy in this chapter 6 but I, I never forget when I was attending my ex-brother-in-law's shul and I was always sitting in the back of the shul and we were finishing um, the, the reading of the Torah and all of a sudden from out of nowhere out of nowhere uh, three nuns and apparently some other students from St. Thomas walked in the door apparently had made a call to come and visit to see what was there but what was what was funny it was not that they that they came to the shul but they were carrying these big large crosses like as, as if that was going to ward off you know any power <laughs> there it was like they were using that as a, as a perhaps as a symbol to protect them from any of the you know what's been taught to them in, in catechism and, and in, in theology of the Jews and I started laughing because you know I saw that same reaction on the faces of the congregants. What are these nuns, Christians, coming into to a Jewish Orthodox shul in Hollywood? What what are they doing here? I remember the whole entire congregation, because I've been always involved in teaching the public about Judaism on radio and on television, and this is how we got started. And all of a sudden, they just all turned back every single member of the show even my good friend in which this whole series of of uh, Saif Hai Karim um, George Albo he looked at me he would just sit in the front of the show he would turn back and look at me and say you know Mario <laughs> because they they knew that basically I was involved in communication to teach out and reach out to everyone who loved the God of Israel and of course they, they, they looked upon me as it were I was the blame for bringing these three nuns into the shul I wish I could have taken credit for that but no I couldn't take credit for that because I was not the one involved apparently uh, it was part of a student learning program and nothing happens by the way by accident you know even people watching this they said this is not by accident um, nothing happens by accident and among the three nuns, the one of the nuns that was basically the organizer of the trip happened to talk to the rabbi of the shul and said to him, Rabbi, you know, I appreciate you allowing us to come and visit your community, but the reason I was here is because, what well, you know, our student body 
at our school, university, wanted to know more about Judaism. But also I have a, a very, very uh, curious interest in it because my mother, uh, who was never religious, used to tell us that you know she was Jewish and she was fleeing, I think it was Germany or something like that, during the war and became Catholic. Do you have any idea how many Jews during the Holocaust, during that period of time of horrendous fascism, basically converted to Christianity or at least outwardly in order to save their neck from Yamak Shemo Hitler? It has happened so many times in our history. This is why we have what's called Anusims. And so this nun began to explain the whole story. She was, in fact, a nun who happened to be Jewish. She didn't know it. She didn't know the, the Jewish law. And so we had that opportunity after um, davening and after the prayers on Shabbat to be able to explain to her. They sat down with me afterwards and had a good chance to get an opportunity to speak to them. What happened to them afterwards, I have no idea. I know they had made the commitment with the rabbi of the shul to come back and learn more. Hopefully they had returned back to to Judaism, the law of Moses, to the faith of Moses. But we have, I have no idea. And this also happened quite many times. We had another person who happened to be the financial director of the archdiocese of Boca Raton. And... Uh, Coming to my classes on Sunday morning there at the shul of Hollywood, um, she began to ask questions. You know, my, my father and my grandfather is, is wanting to go under circumcision, she would tell me. And I said to her, you know what? You need to look into your family roots. And lo and behold, the very moment I said that, she began doing research and starting to dig a little bit. And all of a sudden, she found that, she, that was given to her a an image Never forget that. An image, she brought the picture and everything <laughs> of a Virgin Mary, you know, an idol. But this idol had something unique that most other images of of their saints don't have. This one had a crushed or broken nose as if it was done on purpose. Not that it fell down and, and they broke the nose and they kept it as a, as a heirloom. No, no, no. This one was given to them that way. And lo and behold, the story was that basically it was given during the time in which they became Catholics. They converted to Catholicism and <clears throat> as a way to be able to, to hide their actual true faith. This was done in order to puzzle. Puzzle means to nullify the status of an idol within the house. And they had carried that and passing it down from one generation to the other and this this lady that basically was coming to my classes on Sunday had that idol given to her she didn't want to take it because she had finally understood what you know idolatry is all about and what we can't do but when she showed me the pictures I go that's an idol that was puzzled it was completely you know devoid of as an idol now you can possess it preferably not but you can with no problem going to Jewish law. And as she began to learn, she began to delve more and more. She tried to ask her mother, Mom, tell me more about our family history. Gave a little bit more information. It came down that her grandfather had this urge all of a sudden to get circumcised because if not, he would go to hell. <laughs> and I said, ask him point blank. Ask your grandfather point blank. You know, where did he get this idea from? And then apparently the grandfather told him, we're Jewish. <clears throat> I know your mom didn't want you to know this, but you know, the whole family is Jewish. We came out of Europe running away from Nazi Germany. Oh, and I said to myself, Baruch Hashem, thank God, God is good. And as a result, um, she went through a process of, of conversion. Very, very studious person. I don't know where and what she's doing. I know she went through conversion through a, a bed din that put her through literal Gehenna, you know, studying three years, four years. I said, this is not right. You don't treat a person that way. 
putting them in such a, 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 a and this is why I've seen how the abuse takes place when a person goes through a process of conversion. Technically speaking, she didn't have to convert. I said to her, you don't have to convert. Your mother's Jewish. Your mother's mother is Jewish. You don't have to convert. And then insisted. Because, you know, if you don't convert, you're not, they can't switch you over to a different custom. So she went through the conversion process. I don't know if she got married. I don't know any of that. She was married to a, a very wealthy Catholic person and they got divorced or got, I don't know what happened there, but bottom line is she made a choice to return back to the faith of her fathers. Now that's why I say her will, her choice, was that she wanted to reconnect with her people. And may God bless every single person who goes through that struggle and reconnecting back to their forefathers who happen to be of Jewish ascent. It's not easy, my friends. And then you get labeled by the Jewish, oh, you're a convert. Like you're something dirty, you know. You know, so you wonder why the abuse takes place and why so many things is happening to the community of Israel as a result of so much m mistreatment of the converts and of the, those who are returning back when we should embrace them all. We don't have a right to do what they think is, is justifiable. Oh, well, we're rejecting them just like Naomi rejected Ruth three times. No, they've gone beyond the three times. I've seen abuse that you would not want to be a part of. <laughs> you would say, you know what? If this is what being a Jew is, take it and you know what? Put it up where it never shines. Point blank. It's ugly. It's, it's completely horrendous. Instead, there should be joy, simcha with the, the community when a person embraces a faith that basically, number one, is hard to live by, but one is joyful, and what's one that God himself brings a person to himself so that he can be part of the community of what's called Kalal Israel, and then get mistreated. This is why God doesn't smile happily when our communities treat the person who's going through a conversion process that way. He's not happy with that. And then, lo and behold, things negative befalls the community and you wonder why. We are in the three weeks, which reminds us very clearly of the reason why our temple was destroyed. And we're told over and over and over again Sinat Hinnom, which is unwarranted hatred. It was not respecting one another, was not loving one another, was not caring for one another. It was also involving the same evil thing of, of actually seeking converts and then making them twice the son of devils. They were worse situation when they came in. And yet, you cannot deny no rabbi can deny the great statue that Onkelos, a convert who happened to be uh, descendants of Romans, of Caesar, and yet became one of the most incredible illuminaries of the Jewish people. That till this day, we read his commentary in Ar Aramaic. And then you say, and you have that attitude, the chutzpah, to mistreat those who converted no, and that's not the, the, the worst part. The worst part is when they only recognize those that the legal system up there in Israel recognizes. I mean legal system, I'm talking about the Rabbanu. Most of you know my position. I think they should disband the Rabbanu and let every community, whether Orthodox or non-Orthodox, be able to do their own giyurs. And that Israel's position as a secular state except all of those who have embraced Judaism in whatever levels. There has been more damage, more harm done by the Rabbanut office than anything else. It's not that I hate the Rabbanut. I've just seen actions, conducts, which is demonstrating the lack of love towards the convert. There may be issues, 
But those issues are addressed quietly, individually, and not as a policy that basically prohibits all kinds of conversion. And this is what we're dealing with when you deal with issues of conversions. Many, 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 many times I have wanted to get out of people asking me to go through conversion. You know, help me, I want to be a Jew. And really I've pushed a couple of people off to um, the only bed din that's recognized now here in, in Florida, uh, which is Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg in Boca Raton. I've, I've sent them already about two or three people because I want to push off, push off that. Not that I really care whether the Rabbanut accepts what we're doing or not. It's the heart of the person that's coming in that's important. It is their commitment to keeping Torah which is important. It is when three observant Jews, one of them has got to have knowledge over the process and laws of Girut, examines and sees the, the intentions are honest to accept them and be witnesses to their acceptance of the yoke of Torah both written and oral. I remember one case not too long ago one of them began to say yeah well, I accept the, the the yoke of Torah both written and oral and then came back right afterwards saying no I don't accept the oral Torah so that your conversion has been invalidated by what you have said. Because the whole basis of the Gior is to the acceptance of the Torah, both written and oral. And you rejected part of it. So you basically invalidated your own conversion. Right the same day. This didn't happen like a, you know, a few days afterwards. Same day. And I said to him, you know what? Here is your Tudab. invalid. So we got to take accountability for our actions and our decisions, our conduct, our behavior, even what we say. We have to take ownership of it. When we do so, we become better people, become a people, a holy people in all of our endeavors. May God bless you and yours, and may God shine his light upon you, and may God show grace upon Kalal Israel as well that in when Kalal Israel walks in the ways of the Lord, that he would bring the other people that still are waiting to be part of his people and part of the children of God into his fold. May God bless you and all. And remember, be part of the ways of Israel. Very simple. Download the application, fill it out, send it up to me, and we'll send you out a membership card that says Ways of Israel, members of the, of the Ways of Israel. Shalom, shalom. Have a wonderful week. Good tavok, as they say in Yiddish. I'm not Yiddish. It's funny. Que tenga una buena semana. Good week. Shalom.